Good morning, my creative friends. I am so happy that you're here to join us this morning. We are going to have a ton of fun. Now, I did call you my creative friends because you are creative. And you might not feel creative all the time because maybe you're not really a fan of art or you're not great at music, but there are so many ways to be creative. We can be creative on our on our football team or our baseball team and the way that our team plays together and plans how we're going to win the game. We can be creative in school in the way that we solve problems or even in the way that we you know, interact with one another and become friends. There are so many different ways to be creative and creativity is what we're going to be talking about all month. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you're made in God's image. Let's say that together. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you're made in God's image. And this is a big deal because God is the most creative person in the universe. In fact, he made the universe. He made the big, tall mountains and he made the little tiny ants that are crawling around in your backyard. In fact, he made you and he made me and he made us in his image. That's what the Bible says. And because he made us in his image, we can find creative ways to show off God's creativity in our lives. This is a big deal. And like I said, God is the most creative. In fact, God is the most everything. And that's what our Bible verse tells us this month. It says, great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness, no one can fathom. Psalm 145, verse 3. Let's say this together. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. This is big, right? This is saying God is so big, so great. His creativity is so far above ours that we can't even understand it. And there are lots of ways that God has shown his creativity in his creation here on earth. In fact, I thought we could talk about some of those, and I thought a fun way to do that would be through a game. Now, our game today is called The Sky's the Limit, and this is a trivia game that you get to play along at home with. So I'm going to ask you some questions, and each question I'm going to give you three 
possible answers for. And what I want you to do is when I ask, what do you think, tell me, yell it out, or just keep track in your head of how many answers you get right, all right? So here we go with question number one. What is the number 29,029? Is it the number of species of animals on Earth, the height of Mount Everest in feet, or the number of active volcanoes in the world? What do you think? Well, if you thought that Mount Everest was 29,029 feet high, you'd be right. How incredible is that? That is so tall. Moving on to question number two. What is the smallest known thing in the universe? So the smallest thing that scientists can have ever discovered. Is it a quark? Is it your piece of cake when your brother cuts it? Or is it an ant? Little tiny ants crawling around your backyard. Well, the answer is a quark. I know, I know you thought it was the piece of cake when your brother cuts it because he always cuts it so small so he can cut a bigger piece for himself and then he can say they were equal but they're not equal and you can get mad and your parents believe him but you're just like, this is such a small piece of cake. Anyway, it's a quark. They're so tiny. They're actually smaller than molecules or atoms. The tiniest thing in the universe that we know about is a quark. Now, question number three. What is the largest animal believed to ever exist? So ever in the whole history of the earth, what's the largest animal that's ever existed? Is it the Loch Ness Monster? Is it a great white shark? Or is it the blue whale? Well, it's actually the blue whale. Yeah, the largest animal that's ever existed is still alive and swimming around our oceans right now, these giant blue whales. How cool is that? What is the smallest known mammal? Is it the Etruscan shrew, the chihuahua, or the African pygmy hedgehog? Now remember, pygmy means real tiny. Well, the answer, I hope you didn't fall for me telling you what pygmy meant because the actual answer is the Etruscan shrew. They're tiny, tiny little shrews. Really, really cool. So we went from the biggest known mammal with the blue whale all the way down to the smallest known mammal with the Etruscan shrew. Next question. What is the highest point in the United States? Is it Denali? Is it Mount Kilimanjaro, or is it Pike's Peak? Well, don't bless the rains down in Africa just yet because it's actually Denali. That is the tallest mountain in the United States. Check that out on your screen right now. And all right, last question. We were just at the highest point in the United States, so what is the lowest point in the United States? Is it Miami, Florida? Is it Death Valley, California? Or is it New Orleans, Louisiana? Where is the lowest point in the United States? Well, it is actually Death Valley, California. Not the farthest south, but the lowest point in the entire United States. Guys, it is crazy all the different ways that God has shown his creativity in his creation. And we can show our creativity that God has given us in so many different ways too. Now, I have some friends who are super creative, so I thought it would be a good idea for us to check in with our friends at the So-and-So Show. Let's watch. Hey, Brandon. Oh, hey, hey, John, glad you're here. Did you notice how unseasonably cold it is outside today? Yeah. I'm having to knit a sweater so I won't freeze to death when I leave later. <gasps> Trying to decide if I should change the pattern, you know, like knit one, purl two. <laughs> Saw that on a knitting show once. Don't know what it means. <laughs> anyway, that's what I'm trying to decide. 
You know they have a show for everything nowadays. I saw a show the other night about how to cut your cat's hair. Now, I don't have a cat, and I couldn't stop watching it. It was uh, relaxing, I guess. Anyway, what do you think I should do? Knit one pearl two or keep the pattern the same? <laughs> Knit one pearl two. Why don't you take your jacket off? Stay a while. Here, you dropped your glass. I really hate knitting. Hey everybody, I'm Brandon. And I'm John, and welcome to the So-and-So Show. John, why don't you tell the folks at home what we're doing today? Beats me, it's up to you, Brandon. <laughs> Seriously, though. Yeah. Uh, this was your week to plan the guests, so... No, 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 no. It was definitely your week to come up with a game. No, 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 no. No, 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 What are we saying no to? I don't remember. Yeah, me either. Okay, so what do you have planned for us today, Brando? Oh, yeah, that's it. What, you really don't have anything planned today? No! Ah. Oh, man! So, uh, oh, you know what, you know what? Never fear, this always works. Oh, okay, go. Do this. Please welcome to the show someone who knows stuff! Someone who knows stuff! Um, I don't, uh, oh, okay, 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 I've got it. Let's play a game. All right. You know, believe it or not, there is some preparation that goes into the games that we play. There's usually rules, props, sometimes it has a name. Let's play What Do We Do on the Show Today? Uh, what do we do on the show today? Now we're just doing what we were already doing. Yeah, but now it's a game. Okay, listen, we're creative guys. We can, uh, we can come up with something, I'm sure, if yeah, we put our heads yeah, together. If only we, we had some sort of contraption with creative ideas on it that we could, you know, use on the show in an emergency situation like this. <sighs> Wait. Hey, you. Yes, you, with the horse head. I is that the wheel of ideas? It's too mean, yes. Yeah. Can we borrow it? All right, thanks so much. All right, our problems are solved, John. You're not even a little curious about- Nay, nay, we got the Wheel of Ideas. The Wheel of Ideas. All right, this game is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, okay. Okay, here we go. Oh, where's it gonna land, where's it gonna land? Make, Make up a story about a dog, a watering can, and an elf. And 10 seconds, uh, go! 10 seconds, oh, okay. Uh, there was an elf who lived in a watering can, and one day a friendly dog came to say hello, but he accidentally knocked over the watering can with his big wet nose. Oh, and the elf done, got done. Wow, time's up, a good story. Yeah, I was on the edge of my seat. I wanted to know what, what was gonna happen to that watering can. Okay, my turn, my turn. All right, here we go, ready? Spin it. Bake a pie with the first three ingredients you can think of. Okay, uh, uh, the first three ingredients are pickles, shredded cheese, and curry powder. Oh, you can't bake a pie like that, can you? Of course! Fast forward! Wow. Uh, you want the first bite? Sure. Uh, time to spin! All right, I'll do it. All right. Get that thing out of here. All right. Ready? <laughs> Sing a song about the weather. All right. Uh, uh, the weather is really fun when I can see the sun. When the clouds are out, it makes me want to pout. 
Oh, that's a nice one. I like the pout part. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Your turn. Go. Okay, here we go. Yep. <laughs> Invent an exercise that works out every muscle in your body. Oh, that should be easy. Challenge accepted. All right. All right, here we go. I need go some space. It. Ready? What about your feet? Oh. And your facial muscles. Don't forget your facial muscles. And your tongue. <laughs> It looks good, I think. You'll be fully in shape in no time. All right, my turn. Draw a picture with your toes. Can I stop now? No, 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 no. I'm going to draw you. Oh, cool. All right. Hang in there. Hang in there. Yeah. You're looking good. Oh, I got a toe cramp. Got a toe cramp. Ow, ow. How do you like your portrait? Oh, that's great. It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey, Kellen. Hey, guys. What's the story today? Well, it looks like you guys got a great head start on our topic because today we're getting creative. Very cool. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's a lot of different ways to be creative. Whoa, like cooking, for example. You see, creativity will come out of everyone differently. Like in music. I love how musicians create so many different types of melodies and play so many different types of instruments. Just music alone has a wide variety of creativity. Sports are creative too. You have to figure out creative ways to work together with your teammates. And then add a little fancy footwork. Woo, and you've got yourself a game. Then there's people who love science and use their creativity to invent things like medicines or cleaning products. Oh, architecture is incredibly creative. You like playing with Legos now, but you could be building skyscrapers someday. Karate! Now those are some creative kicks. Yeah. Artists. Artists use colors to create beautiful pictures that can tell stories and touch people's emotions. It seems like there's no end to people's creativity. You ever wonder why? Oh, wow, back to me again. Let's look at what the Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. He wrote, we are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. Now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared those works for us to do. So there is a reason there are so many different ways to be creative. It's because you, me, and everyone you will ever know were created by a very creative God. And we can use our creativity to do good things, to love others, and to point people to Jesus. Pretty cool, huh? Really cool, Kellen. Yeah, this whole time I thought if you wanted to be creative, you had to know how to draw, and I am not good at that. <laughs> What's that supposed to be? Oh, it's John. Yeah, yeah, I, I can see that. Thanks. Thanks. But lucky for you, there are a ton more ways to be creative than just being good at drawing. That's great news. Mm -hmm. You just got to remember that God created us in his image, so it makes sense that some of his creativity is inside of us. That's awesome. Thanks, Kellen. Anytime. I'll see you guys later. Bye, Kellen. This looks nothing like me. Oh, sure it does. Sure it does. Hey, everybody. It's me, John, and I'm crazy. <laughs> see? It's hard to tell. All right, then. Reveal the question. Reveal the question. How are you creative? Oh, okay. Um, I'm creative because I can make people laugh. I can make people laugh. <laughs> and I'm good at making up stories. What about you? Yeah, whether you create something with your hands or your feet or you create solutions to problems in your mind. T talk about it together. How are you creative? And we'll see you next time on The So-and-So Show. Okay, make me laugh.
Hey, look at me. I, see? You're hilarious. I can do all the exercises. Look at me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm <a> dancing. <laughs> See, this is what it's like for me being with you all the time. <laughs> ah! Guys, God is so creative and he created each and every one of us to show off his creativity through us. God created you so that you could be creative and maybe that creativity does express itself through art or music or drama or one of those ways or maybe it expresses itself some other way. It seems like a lot of of dads have been given creativity to do bad dad jokes, right? Maybe you're giving your dad the old elbow right now because he just gave you a real groaner. Or maybe you're creative through how you make friends and how you invite people into your social circles. Maybe you're creative in another way. Whatever it is, you can use your creativity to help others. But before you can do that, you have to believe that you're creative. And I'm here to tell you that you are. In fact, it's our bottom line this week. God created you so you can be creative. Remember that this week. Remember that forever. And use your creativity to help the people around you. Let's pray. God, Thank you so much for your creation, for everything that you've made for us so that we can see how good you are. God, thank you that you sent Jesus to save us. Thank you that even now we can use the creativity that you've given us to help others, to make other people's lives better. God, I pray this week that we could believe that we are creative, that we could remember that we're creative because you created us. God, thank you for who you are and for what you've done. We pray all of this in your son, Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye.